Ambassador. Good to see you. <laughs> Hello. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you came to be in Nepal. Well, I have uh, served in the uh, Danish Foreign Service for more than 25 years. Um, and um, I have um, been appointed as the as ambassador um, previously to a, a number of, of countries, and uh, and Nepal came up, um, and um, it was a a chance uh, for me uh, to serve in a, a developing country. Uh, in my previous incarnation, I, I worked uh, quite extensively on um, on policy issues. I've been responsible for Denmark's uh, relations with the United Nations, with the World Bank, the international financial institutions, um, but I've actually never served in a developing country. So I think for me uh, personally, um, it um, was a great opportunity, which I was happy to, um, to take. How long has there been a relationship between Nepal and Denmark? And I mean, what what are you actually trying to do in Nepal? What is Denmark trying to do in Nepal? Well, uh, the relationship between um, Denmark and Nepal is very old. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes back to uh, the late 60s, actually, when we established diplomatic relations. And then in the 90s, we uh, opened uh, a mission and uh, and later on, an ambassador was uh, appointed to uh, to Nepal. The main uh, reason uh, for our engagement uh, is uh, development. Um, we uh, have over the years worked in a, a number uh, a, a number of sectors um, supporting the uh, the Nepalese uh, development uh, process. We have been in. Um, We've been in agriculture, in dairy production, we've been in forestry. We worked uh, extensively uh, to uh, improve the education uh, sector in, uh, in Nepal. And after um, the end of um, the insurgents uh, period, um, we again were instrumental in, for instance, um, incorporating, including uh, Maoist uh, combatants into the uh, Nepalese uh, army. So I think um, over the years our our focus in Nepal has has changed slightly. We are now um, uh, engaged in, in much bigger uh, programs. You know, millions of, of uh, U.S. dollars. Um, with a particular focus on uh, good governance, human rights, peace agenda implementation, a new uh, private sector program, an inclusive growth program, and in renewable energy. Mm. And speaking of renewable energy, I was recently in Cabre District, and it seemed like the micro hydro plant mm. has entirely changed the life of this village. Mm -hmm. And it was in a somewhat remote area. Mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about your field visits and what you've mm -hmm. seen. Yeah, I think, I think that is a, a particular um, you know, area where we, uh, where we have made uh, a difference um, to the lives of you know, ordinary uh, people in, uh, in Nepal. Um, we had a, um, a, um, a campaign uh, in, uh, in Denmark last year. We were trying to uh, to tell the uh, the good stories about uh, our uh, development uh, work in uh, a number of, of countries in the world, in particular in uh, in Africa, but I'm pleased to uh, say that uh, Nepal also featured prominently in that cam uh, campaign, as we have uh, reached out uh, to um, five million um, people, uh, supplying them with. Uh, renewable uh, energy or better cooking uh, facilities. Um, I think um, the uh, the energy um, sector uh, and in particular hydropower um, in Nepal very often or too often gets sort of um, hijacked by sort of uh, what do you say uh, high level policy considerations. I think what we're trying to do is that in the meantime, to, to, uh, to help uh, people 
in particular in uh, remote areas. Um, we try and uh, we are supporting the um, installation of small hydropower plants, small uh, solar uh, energy setups, as I say, uh, better uh, cooking um, stove facilities. Um, and, and that, of course, is, is not to say that by, you know, through these uh, projects that we will, um, we will um, you know, dramatically um, change the, the situation, um, you, know, in, you know, across the country. But what we are saying is that we can, with limited uh, funds, with the active uh, participation and contributions from the local community, that we can, in the meantime, change people's lives. Yeah, you know, the thing that I was really impressed with is that there was a whole process to getting the hydropower plant up and running. Yeah. So, you know, I was told women became much more involved. Mm. But then the results that I saw were, you know, right downstream from the plant. There's a woman who is now an entrepreneur. Yeah. She's yeah. grinding corn. Yeah. I saw women coming up the path of books who are probably maybe learning to read mm. for the first time. Yeah. With some of the solar, the small solar cells, I found out that children are able to study longer in the night. Mm -hmm. So in fact, you know, what I saw was it has a dramatic effect. And I was really wondering about that mm. because we're walking up remote area. You also, you had told me about uh, a Dalit woman Mm -hmm. that you met recently. Mm -hmm. and, and can you tell us that story? Well, I think that was, that was a, 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 an, another example that uh, not only, of course, uh, do these uh, small, uh, and in particular, uh, hydropower plants and solar, solar panels uh, make a huge uh, difference to the individual uh, families in terms of what they're able to do. Um, I mean, you can, as you say, you know, all of a sudden the women become entrepreneurs. But I think what, what uh, should, should also be remembered is that, is that because of the, the structure of the projects where, you, where um, local community committees are set up to actually be the sort of the, 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 the runners of, of, the, um, of, the, of the plant in terms of the, of the finances, in terms of getting the maintenance in, basically in, in, in terms of ensuring that these plants will continue to function. And in that process, uh, we have been very uh, focused, it's very important to us to include women and to include uh, marginalized groups. And what I took with me from uh, one particular uh, field visit was the, um, the Dalit woman who was uh, one of the very few who stood up and very elegantly was able uh, to um, explain, I mean, why shouldn't she? Uh, but it was nevertheless uh, unusual uh, the impact that this uh, plant had had for their particular community. How long have you been the operator? What does this power plant mean to this village? Hmm. Um, can you please tell me your name? 
Uh, I am Gokul Gautam, mm. uh, team leader for REMREC. The purpose of the organization is to do what? Basically, uh, our role is facilitating in the development process. Mm. Be- uh, because donors are there, uh, government is there mm. in, in the centers. Mm. And people are living in the last miles mm. uh, without electricity, without any technology, without access, uh, mm. not having access. Mm. <laughs> Uh, to bridge these two two parties mm-hmm. together, mm-hmm. there is our role to promote mm-hmm. uh, and facilitate mm-hmm. the development. How do you get the villagers? They contribute both uh, financially, but they also do work yeah. too. They yeah, help yeah. to build this. Yeah. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah, <coughs> this is the community managed project. Mm. Uh, this is owned by the community, uh-huh. and and. Uh, the households where the electricity is connected mm. among these all houses <coughs> they form a uh, uh, governing board like uh, users committee uh-huh. and users committee will manage all the things mm. <coughs> they mobilize people to work mm. uh, they collect uh, uh, financial sources mm. uh, they make decisions uh, all all mm. and for this type of community work community work mm. um, social mobilization is very important Uh, can you tell us your name? Yeah, Christian. Christian. Yeah. And who are you working for? A Danish newspaper called Politiken. Oh. P-O-L-I-T-I-K-E-N. Okay. And what are you doing in Nepal at the moment? Well, I'm doing so to say my own program, uh, educational program. We have a chance at the newspaper to go abroad mm. once in a year to mm. go somewhere to get inspiration and uh, oh. yeah, try to find out things that you are not doing oh. uh, in your daily working life where mm. I'm a political correspondent and writing about Danish politics in mm. Copenhagen. Mm. Why is this kind of story important to get to the Danish public? I mean, why did you choose you know, to come to this power plant? Mm. Well, uh, there's always an, on, an ongoing discussion in, in Denmark about development aid. Mm. Uh, and whether you should focus more money into Africa and uh, get out of some other places, and then therefore I decided to, and and as a kind of common sense that you should focus more money in in Africa, hmm. uh, and therefore other places they are debated a little bit, and therefore I I decided to to try to go to a place like like Nepal where Denmark has been active for many years mm. and try to see, okay, what difference does it make uh, that Denmark is, is active here mm. as a donor country. And uh, yeah, one of the, the, the things that where Denmark has made a difference, I think, and what I've been told is, is uh, this micro-hydro systems uh, mm. uh, and, and therefore I go here. Can you tell us your name? Uh, my name is Dong Sing Muktan. And how has the life of the villagers changed for the better because of this project? Uh, like ev- w- everything is easier than than before. Yeah. Uh, children have a happy mm. uh, electricity, mm. biogas, mm. Ah. ICS, ah. and less smoke. Women have happy. Yeah, less uh, health problems. Uh, yeah, less yeah, less problems. less problems yeah. lung. Yeah. 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 And less smoke in the house. Hmm. And biogas cooking the food. Yeah. And a benefit for the forest is save the forest. Hi, my name is Resa Pia. Uh, and you work for who? I all work for Alternative Energy Promotion Center. There uh-huh. I'm a senior in energy officer, huh. and I coordinate the activities huh. of all the programs. The EPC is part of the government, correct? Yeah, it's a government program on mm. the Ministry of Energy Science and Environment, mm. and then it's uh, it's an autonomous organization. Uh, why is it important for the EPC to get involved in projects like this? Uh, it's very important because AEPC at present is a focal organization that promotes 
growth and uh, disseminate renewable energy technology, mm. especially focusing in rural areas. Mm. And there are several reasons uh, for this we need to promote. Mm. The, the first of is the regional disparity that we have, because if we see most of the development activities are focused on urban areas. Mm. And in rural areas, people have very less opportunities. Mm. And this type of technology, this type mm. of intervention will give the opportunities mm. to the people who are residing also mm. in the rural areas. Mm. And this will bring a development, mm. balanced development, I will say. How has um, having light helped you in your studies? What what kind of job do you want to have when you get older? Sister. A nurse. Uh Ektam Ramra. Ektam Ramra. Okay. Tanibat. sure that the viewing public can really see how these kind of smaller beautiful projects mm. really make an impact on mm. people's lives. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's just, it, it was really just incredible mm. to me. Good. Let's shift a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about uh, Denmark's, uh, well the Good Governance Program mm -hmm. that you're working on. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that please? Well, we have we have worked, um, you know, for 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 quite a number uh, of years uh, with um, various uh, you know public institutions, but of course also with um, with um, with NGOs, uh, with with interest uh, organisations. Um, we have been for a number of years supporting the National Human Rights Commission. We want to build up to play our part in in um, uh, building up the, uh, the capacity uh, of, the, uh, of the Commission uh, to monitor the, uh, the human rights uh, situation in, uh, in Nepal. Um, we have for quite a number of years um, been uh, engaged in supporting the Election Commission uh, where we were actually the, the um, sort of the instigator in uh, a small pilot, uh, pilot uh, project uh, that paved the way for the election ID cards when no one believed that that was a viable proposition. Um, and I think um, what, what I see in, in particular is that because of our long engagement, and sometimes it's very practical, sometimes it's sort of more you know, sophisticated, you know, um, but, but, but nevertheless that, um, that we are seen as a, a trusted uh, partner and we are seen as a, um, a partner who will, um, in a manner of speaking, call a spade a spade. Um, but it's, quen it's, it's generally accepted that we don't have a hidden uh, agenda. Uh, you may have uh, seen in the, in the papers a couple of weeks or these past uh, couple of weeks that um, Nepal was uh, examined on uh, her human rights uh, record in Geneva. Uh, this is a particular area where we have been working very closely with uh, government, uh, you know, also government institutions uh, to, uh, to share our uh, experience um, with our uh, Nepalese um, uh, colleagues in terms of uh, going through the uh, international monitoring, uh, you know, setup. Um, and I, you know, and it's it's good to see that we could we could also in that process learn from one another. So we had a a, a colleague in uh, in Copenhagen on a on a video uh, link um, sharing our most recent uh, experiences with the, with the Nepalese uh, colleagues here, 
Um, the, the reason why we sort of uh, are quite um, uh, active is that um, for the uh, just by by chance, both Nepal and Denmark will be up for review in 2015. So it's again, you know, we are. It, it is what we are engaged in is the broader, uh, you know, human rights agenda, which of course is closely linked with, with um, you know, the whole um, peace Im implementation process. But we try also, uh, you know, to make it tangible, to to sort of because there are concrete things that that you that you can um, achieve. That that of course, as we saw with the uh, with the IDs, have a huge impact. Um, you know, for um, in in this case, um, for the the holding and the successful uh, holding of national elections, and I think they were important. Mm -hmm. You know, in I know in in the U.S. it's somewhat difficult to convince people about uh, American citizens about foreign aid. You know, why should it you is. Do it? <laughs> uh, recently, yeah. um, you know, I met a Danish reporter mm -hmm. who um, was out to write about the real Nepal. And how important is that, that journalists from Denmark, I mean, from my country, mm. America, come here and then, you know, write objective stories as much as possible about what's happening in Nepal? I think, it, I mean, it is very important. It is something that we are that we're constantly, um, you know, monitoring uh, back at, uh, at base in, uh, in Copenhagen. Um, we, um, we were very uh, pleased uh, a couple of weeks ago we had a new... Uh, survey uh, being published where um, I can't remember if the sample was say 5,000 Danes um, who were basically asked the question do you support uh, Denmark giving more than 0.7% of GDP uh, to developing countries and it was a resounding yes mm. and it was actually almost two-thirds of the people asked uh, who were supportive of the um, of the Danish um, you know contribution, um, but but it's not something that you it, it's it's something that you you constantly have to be aware of, and I'm I'm just uh, thinking that um, one way in in our uh, case has been um, we have had as long as I can remember um, every year um, we have uh, a Christmas calendar. And it's a Christmas calendar that you can uh, buy in banks, at the post office, uh, whatever. And, and part of the, uh, of the, the, the money uh, generated is used for specific developing projects. Um, but not only are they used for develop, uh, development uh, projects, but um, a film crew is then sent out to tell, to show the story of the girl in, I can remember one year, in a remote uh, village, um, I think it was uh, Peru or, or Colombia, who because of, of this support, um, all of a sudden had the possibility of uh, continuing her uh, education. So it's, it's also important, again, to, um, uh, to tell the, the, the tangible uh, stories and I think um, and, and I think you know that that's a very sort of typical example we all remember it we've all watched these uh, programs you know just before um, before Christmas and and of course over the years it, it has a, an impact on people's perception yeah. of, of why we should be one of the uh, countries uh, in the world uh, contributing uh, the most to uh, developing, um, you know, less fortunate countries. Oh. And as a final word, um, what would you like to leave our uh, viewing audience with? That is also important to uh, to remember the uh, the positive uh, stories. Um, I've just uh, tweeted today that uh, the uh, the good news of uh, today is that uh, WHO will um, declare Nepal for. Um, finally free of polio. Um, I think it's, um, it's good to remember um, the, uh, the smiling faces uh, from a uh, rock concert uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, celebrating International Women's Day. Yes. There is a, there's a force, there is a, uh, an appetite uh, to, uh, to change uh, things. 
Um, and I, I just hope that um, that politician listen, um, because that is uh, what will ultimately uh, drive the uh, the process of change of development in Nepal. Very good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome. Namaste. We'll see you in two weeks.